Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the Watchman Prayer Teachings. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your kindness and your tender mercies. Father, we pray that you help us to remember you. Father, we pray you help us to remember your goodness and your help and your grace and your supply in our life. And Father, we pray you teach us to be grateful. And uh, Father, we pray you help us to draw near to you and be in close fellowship and communion with you. Father, you are our Heavenly Father, our God. Father, we thank you made us your children and your uh, family. Father, we thank you that you made us capable of having intimacy with you. Father, we thank you made us capable of drawing into a close fellowship and communion with you. Father, we appreciate it. We thank you for it and we praise you for it. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, skill and revelation in your word, your will and your love. Father, we pray you teach us, train us and help us to pray. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, skill and revelation to pray, to intercede and to function as watchmen. Father, we pray you raise up intercessors and watchmen in the body of Christ. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious help for us. Father, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, your love endures forever. Father, your faithfulness endures forever. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be your holy name. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal. And Father, we pray that your healing anointing drive out every form of sickness and every form of disease and every form of pain from the bodies of those who are listening to me. And Father, we pray that your anointing break every yoke, remove every burden, break every chain. Father, we pray for your comfort for your people. Father, we pray you grant them strength in their spirit, soul and body. Father, we pray you grant them peace. Father, we pray you grant them strength to move forward, to overcome, to triumph, to succeed, to prosper. Father, we thank you for your glorious help in our lives. And Father, we also pray that you are our refuge, our fortress, our God in you we trust. Father, we, you are our protector. Father, you are our shade upon our right hand. Father, you are our shield and our exceedingly great reward. Father, we pray that you keep us as the apple of your eye. Father, we pray for your mighty protection upon us, our families, our household, and all that belongs to us on every side. And Father, we pray that you preserve our going out and our coming in. Father, we pray you preserve us from all evil. Father, we pray you preserve our life. Father, we pray no weapon formed against us will prosper. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we bind the works of the devil against us. And in the name of our Lord Jesus, we bind every scheme, every plan, every device, every strategy of the devil against us. Father, you are the greater one, the most high. Father, we thank you for living big in us. Father, we thank you for causing us to triumph, to overcome, to succeed and to move forward. Father, you are wonderful, awesome, glorious and mighty. Father, you are wonderful in counsel, excellent in guidance, mighty in deeds. And Father, we thank you for your mighty help for us. And Father, we pray that you grant uh, the leaders and the government servants and authorities and eminent people in our nation wisdom, knowledge, understanding and skill and revelation to lead and manage our country and to lead and manage our country in your ways, in your wisdom and according to your plans. And Father, we pray that our leaders and the government servants be a blessing to the people and do good to the people. And Father, we pray they punish the evil. Abruna Menantra, let them enforce justice in our nation. We pray that we have a sense of justice according to your word and your wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Abruna Menantra Rakanela Hongoro Nantra Obruna Nantra May your righteousness and your ways and your justice be established in our nation. Father, we thank you for your marvelous help. And Father, we also pray that you remove the wicked from their presence. Father, we pray you surround them with wise, God-fearing and able people. 
Father, we pray for your good hand upon them and your guidance for them. Father, open the eyes of their understanding. Father, we pray you teach our leaders and government authorities and servants to deal wisely with other nations. Father, we pray for your peace and your unity in our nation. Father, we thank you for your glorious help. Father, we also pray for your peace and unity in the northeastern areas. And Father, we pray that you protect our nation from any kind of sedition and any kind of division. Father, you are the great one. Father, you are the most high. Father, we thank you for your marvelous help. And Father, we pray concerning the U.S. elections. Father, we pray you grant U.S. an excellent president according to your heart and your will. Man who fears you is able who will do your will. Father, we pray that you stop the wicked from becoming president of U.S.A. Father, by the authority of your word, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we bind every work of the devil against the man whom God has selected. In the name of our Lord Jesus, no weapon formed against the man whom God has selected will prosper. In the name of our Lord Jesus, let every scheme, every plan, every device, every weapon against the man of God be broken and destroyed. Father, we pray you destroy all the ungodly, wicked alliances against the man whom you have selected. And Father, we also pray that you bring their schemes and cunning devices to nothing. Father, we pray you protect your man from every snare and every pit. And Father, we pray you establish his steps and broaden his way. Father, may your good hand be upon him. And Father, you guide him and lead him. And keep him as the apple of your eye. Father, we pray for your mighty protection upon him and his family and every everything that belongs to him. Father, you are so good, so great and so awesome. Father, we pray for a great and a mighty victory for your man. A kind of victory that cannot be spoken against or doubted. A marvelous, glorious victory. Father, we thank you for your help. Father, you are good, you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. Father, the Most High still rules in the kingdoms of men. Father, let people know and the world know the King of Kings and God of Gods is alive and well. And the Most High still rules in the kingdom of men. The God of heaven and earth still gives the kingdom of mankind to whom He has chosen. Father, we thank you for your marvelous help. Let people know that they are not gods. Father, we pray that you show them that they are just men with breath in their nostrils. Father, we thank you for your glorious help. And Father, we also pray for your peace upon the nation of Israel. Father, we pray for your blessing, your favor and your prosperity upon Israel. And Father, we pray you keep Israel as the ample of your eye. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand against the adversaries of Israel. Father, we pray you smite those who rise up against Israel before their face. Father, we pray those who come against Israel one way, flee from them seven ways. Father, we pray no weapon formed against Israel will prosper. Father, we pray for your mighty protection upon your people. The descendants of your sea, your friend, the, they are the seed of Abraham. And Father, you do not forsake your people. You do not alter your covenant. You do not alter your words. Father, your mercy is for a thousand generations. Father, we pray for your mercy and your faithfulness upon Israel. Father, let Israel thrive, flourish and become stronger and bigger. Father, we thank you for your great help. Father, you have sworn a blood covenant and you have given the land of Israel to Abraham, Isaac and to Jacob who is Israel. And Father, we pray the land of Israel will belong to Israel only. And to Jerusalem will, abelo- will belong to Israel only. Father, we thank you for your great help for Israel. Father, we thank you for your marvelous help for Israel. Father, we praise you, we worship you and adore you 
Father, we thank you. You heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, God made an eternal covenant with Israel. It's an eternal covenant. It's not, <laughs> it's not something that uh, ceases with um, a certain period of time. It's an eternal, co- eternal covenant and it's a blood covenant. And God has not forgotten it. Man may forget it. Man may try to erase it. Man may reject it. Man may rebel against it. But that does not change God's position concerning this matter. The nation of Israel belongs to Israel only. Right? Hallelujah. Israel... You know, the Bible talks about how the blessing, the land was given to Abraham and then it was given to Isaac. Though Ishmael also is his son, the land and the blessing of Abraham was not put upon uh, Ishmael. It was placed upon Isaac. God said, in Isaac, your seed will be called. God appeared to Isaac and said, I'll give you the land which I have sworn to your father Abraham. And Isaac had two sons. Esau and Jacob and the land was not given to Esau. Esau was given a separate piece of land you know the Mount Seir and uh, Jacob was given this land very specific boundaries hallelujah and God has not forgotten it right Israel meaning Jacob <laughs> hallelujah this nation is called the nation of Israel because all of them descended from Jacob whose name is Israel. So the land belongs to the children of Jacob, the children of Israel, to nobody else. Hallelujah. Remember that. And uh, when you pray, pray according to God's word. You don't want to pray according to the popular opinion concerning Israel. You don't have to pray according to the popular, you know, the UN resolution and the International Court of Justice. <laughs> right? You don't have to pray back according to their ruling. They are not God. You should remember that. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter whether the ICJ rules something or the United Nations say something. Right? It does not mean a thing to God. What God has said will endure forever. God's word is truth and God's word does not change. So when you pray for Israel, pray according to God's promise, God's covenant and God's word. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so very important. All right then, let's uh, go to our text today. Go with me once again to Psalm 27. We are going to learn how to become intimate with God. How to develop this intimacy. How to develop that close communion and fellowship. We are going to start looking at the various things that we need to do in our life to develop these things, right? And this is not a mystery. This is, this, uh, is not just for a chosen few. No, this is for everybody. Every child of God has the capacity and the ability to be close to God, to be intimate with God, to draw near to God. Hallelujah. Every every child of God has this capacity and the ability. We just need to learn how to do it and apply it in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So go with me first of all to Psalm 27 and let's uh, read our text. Verse 4, one thing I have desired of the Lord. So this is something that you can pray to God and ask him. Say, ask God, you know, I want to dwell in your presence. I want to be close with you. I want to develop this intimacy with you. I want to uh, develop this close communion and close fellowship. Okay? You, you can ask God and he will do it for you. Here, David is teaching the secrets from his life, right? 
and uh, this is something that david practiced in his life and we see how close he is with god so much so that god himself is saying david is a man after my own heart right you can learn a thing or two from such a man about being close with god you can learn from this man about how to develop intimacy with god hallelujah one thing i have desired of the lord that i will seek after that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the lord and to inquire in his temple yeah let's also look at psalm 42 hallelujah to jesus verse 1 as the heart panteth after the water brooks so panteth my soul after thee o god my soul thirsteth for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god underline that word soul right underline that circle it mark it highlight it right so notice the connection between soul and thirst and desire and intimacy right what thirsteth for god the soul soul you know most of the time we if we focus on the heart but we forget involving the soul in while we are seeking god we focus on our heart sometimes we focus on our words now all those things are relevant and good and accurate and we should do it but we don't focus so much on the soul part of it see being intimate involves emotions thoughts desires imaginations right and of course the word that genuinely comes out of those things right all these things are involved in an intimate relationship right if you say i'm i'm a, i'm very close to this person but you don't have any emotions or feelings concerning that person you don't think about that person Uh, you are probably you know just lying to yourself right <laughs> because if you are intimate and close with a person you will think about them right and there will be certain emotions concerning them there will be some feelings right there will be some gratitude there will be some um, uh, affection hallelujah all these things are involved <laughs> and sometimes you will cry for joy in that relationship sometimes you may cry for sorrow in that relationship right hallelujah soul and emotions are deeply involved in a relationship you you should know that and in your relationship with god all these things come into play the desire the emotion the feeling the thoughts the imaginations the gratitude even tears <laughs> even laughter all these things come into play in your relationship with god so you you got to remember this hallelujah look at verse 4 when i remember these things right my tears have been my meat day and night while they say continually unto me where is your god when i remember these things notice again i pour out my soul in me say soul right there is there are verses which talk about pouring out your heart that's also true here he is talking about pouring out your soul right for i had gone with the multitude i went with them to the house of god with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy day why art thou cast on o my soul why art thou disquieted in me hope thou in god for i will yet praise him for the help of his countenance notice you should develop hope in your soul so that you can praise him right hope is predominantly in your soul right hope in god hope is the anchor of the soul hope protects your soul and your mind 
and it produces praise hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so underline these things write down these things very important now keeping these thoughts in mind let me show you another scripture go with me to psalm 103 very familiar passage with the, uh, for most of us but we are going to study it from this angle notice he is saying bless the lord o my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord o my soul and forget not all his benefits so your mind your will your emotions your feelings your desires your imaginations all these things get involved in blessing god in giving thanks to god in praising god in worship all these things need to get involved right do you see this many times have have you noticed sometimes people you know they will sing right but they are not involved in their singing have you noticed that right their mouth may be uttering those words but they are not into it why because their soul is not getting into it their thoughts their emotions their feelings are, are running wild it is dwelling on something else it's not connecting with god hey right? so when when that person gives thanks to god or he praises it's it's more of a, you know a routine or it's more of a tradition or it's just lip service right you know it's like you know they are with their mouth they praise me but their heart is far from me <laughs> you get into that kind of a scenario there so how do you get your soul involved in um, giving thanks to god or praising and worshiping how do you do that because intimacy requires that intimacy requires your soul to be involved in it love happens in the soul realm yes we talk about you know the love is of the heart that's true not saying no right but it is in the soul that lot of it is expressed it is through your soul you do that because see your dreams your imaginations your emotions are all in the soul right let me show you some scriptures from go to song of solomons song of solomon hallelujah and here you will notice a, a particular phrase repeated over and over and over again the one whom my soul loves what loves soul go to chapter 3 uh, song of solomon chapter 3 by night on my bed i sought him whom my soul loves you would have heard the term soul ties right been around uh, the the christian world and if you are familiar with various uh, factions you know where various uh, you know groups you, you would hear this particular um, term soul ties and there there is a, a genuine bible teaching behind that right uh, i don't want to go into that but you know there's that concept why why is there a soul tie because see they are invested they were invested in that relationship through their thoughts their constant thinking their constant meditation right that that emotion that was birthed out of it the the the, the feelings that were generated because of those thinking and that fellowship and the time spent all that binds your soul with, with that person you know you start thinking a lot about them constantly thinking okay so anyway uh look at this if you go to verse 2 again i will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the broad ways i will seek him whom my soul loves verse 3 the watchman that go about the city found me to whom i said soi soi him whom my soul loves right over and over again so notice uh, in when you are in love with a person when you the soul is involved 
Hallelujah. Without the soul, uh, you won't uh, enjoy the process of love. <laughs> the, you, 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 you really won't. Right? If, when, when your soul is not involved in it, it would be like an interaction between an employer and an employee. Right? Or with the strangers who are just you know meeting for the because they they need to do it for executing a business deal or uh, you know to fulfill social norms only when your soul is involved do you actually have a proper loving relationship right keep the thought in mind let me show you under the scriptures. I want to lay a foundation for this. Right? This is not some uh, <laughs> crazy teaching outside the word of God. I will I want to give you a lot of scriptures so that you will understand what I'm saying. Go to first Samuel and look at chapter eighteen. Look at the beginning of that uh, chapter. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul notice uh, again this is between two men this is a friendship right but again even in this friendship the soul is involved right what got knit together the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. This relationship was so strong that Jonathan was willing to displease his father who was a king. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right? This is genuine love. And notice, if you notice, their soul is involved in it. They love each other. They do things for each other. Right? They are protecting each other. Jonathan even risked his life to help David. Hallelujah. Went against his family, went against his father's desire, incurred the wrath of his father. Eh? His father publicly insulted him because he took the side of David. But Jonathan was willing to go through all that because he loved David. Right? And notice the Bible makes it a point to let us know that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So what about your relationship with God? So in your relationship with God, do you get your mind involved? Do you get your soul involved? Are your thoughts involved? When you are worshipping God, do your emotions get involved? Are you worshipping God along with emotions? Eh? Is there joy in it? Is, is, is there love in it? Is there a zeal in your worship? Is there genuine happiness when you are sitting before God? Eh? Hallelujah. You know, sometimes, you know, <laughs> we don't feel like praying, but yet we pray because, you know, for various condition reasons, maybe you didn't sleep well, <laughs> you're still feeling tired, maybe you worked a lot, <laughs> maybe you pulled a 14-hour <laughs> long shift and then you are sitting in church, <laughs> right, trying to praise God and pay attention to what is being said. See, in those kind of times, and I understand, you know, if, if your feelings are not getting involved in what is happening. Right, it's true, you know. You know, sometimes maybe, you know, you you had a, a fight in your house and <laughs> and after having a fight, you are coming and you, you are entering into the presence of God. And to, and to begin with, you know, when, when, you, when people are singing or you want to give thanks to God, you know, your lips are moving but the mind is not getting into what you're doing. Your soul is not getting involved. Right? I understand all that. And I understand the fact that you should, you know, pray even when you don't feel like it. I, I understand all that. That's a good thing to practice because if you're going to lean entirely on your feelings, 
<laughs> and uh, you know you won't pray much but at the same time you need to learn how to train your soul to get involved with god to get involved with his word to get involved in his presence you need to train notice the commandment of god commandment of god go to deuteronomy chapter 6 notice god is very specific about what he wants from his children right verse 4 and 5 here o israel the lord our god is one lord and thou shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might right so notice god wants your heart involved in it god wants your soul involved in it god wants your mind involved in it god wants your strength involved in it hallelujah it's a very specific commandment god could have just said thou shall love the lord your god god could have stopped right there right but god goes in, into the details is on purpose explaining it with more words so that we will know how to love him and what all should be involved in our love for him hallelujah and thou shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your might so all these things need to be involved in your love for god hallelujah right so we need to learn how to get our soul involved what does it mean to love god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind first of all we are going to focus on the soul part it's important because most often that's what we miss and and um, we need to learn how to train our soul so that we can love god with all our soul hallelujah hallelujah to jesus if you notice the bible says bless the lord our soul let's go there again i will introduce certain principles and points and then we will discuss that in more detail in the next message psalm 103 psalm 103 bless the lord o my soul so notice again he is saying get involved in it <laughs> right you need to be involved in blessing god so david is speaking to his soul remember in in psalm 42 he talks or he he speaks to his soul there also saying why art thou cast on o my soul it's not feeling good it's depressed right <laughs> it's sorrowful so he's saying why are you cast on right hope in god you see because hope produces peace and joy so he he looks at his soul and he sees you know he is depressed he is sorrowful and he was to come out of it so he is speaking to his soul saying hope in god here is saying bless the lord o my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord o my soul and forget not all his benefits now if you want your soul to get involved in it you have to begin with your thoughts right thoughts you have to learn to think about god you have to learn to remember god you have to learn to imagine things concerning god right you you need to start there because your uh, thoughts your remembrance right and your imaginations they produce the feelings and the emotions what you think about a person right determines what you feel about them what you think and ponder and meditate upon determines what kind of emotions attach themselves to those thoughts see emotions and feelings don't come out of nowhere now they come 
based on the kind of thoughts that you have concerning that matter see for example i'm i'm using a very common example okay. i love the nation of israel i'm very zealous about it right the way it started was i uh, i got to know about um, after i got saved now i i was born into a christian family so i know about israel and you know from the time from my childhood but uh, this love that i have for israel began after i got saved i found how god wanted a believer to pray for israel and to believe god for the prosperity and the welfare of israel and um i saw how god wanted his people to be uh, saved so i saw these things in the bible and i started praying for them right so i i invested time in praying for that nation right i wanted them to do well i wanted those people to be protected uh, i saw this is god's desire so i just took god's thoughts and made them my thoughts i started desiring israel to be peaceful and to be prosperous and to be protected i started desiring that um, the israeli people should be saved right they should get to know jesus and i that's how i started and so i started these things i saw in um, romans go to the book of romans romans chapter 10 look at verse 1 brother my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be saved right and um, <laughs> if you go and uh, look at uh, chapter 9 Hallelujah to Jesus. In, 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 in this place he says, yeah, verse 3. Verse 2 actually, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brother and my kinsmen according to the flesh. Talking about Israel. Paul says, if, if, if it would mean the salvation of Israel, then I am willing even to be accursed from Christ. right moses said this you know concerning israel you know if you are going to destroy all israel blot out my name from you know your book <laughs> hallelujah moses says that see he is passionate about israel isn't it see i started looking at these things and um, and i started thinking about israel i started paying attention to what is happening to them I started considering them I started thinking about them and I started praying for them now when it comes to Israel I'm very passionate when I speak about Israel I speak very strongly right and my mind my heart and my emotions are involved in it right when I say something about Israel I mean every single word that I speak because I I I I this is not something that I you know I write down and say no I've been thinking about them i've been praying about them i've been studying about them from the bible and i've been uh, you know reading books and that i've i've been listening to people you know about concerning experts in concerning israel you know the proper ones not those crazy people right and um and over a period of time there is a wealth of thoughts a treasure house of thoughts and a treasure house of uh, desires and emotions built into me concerning israel so when i pray for israel or when i teach about israel or when i say things about israel my soul gets passionately involved in what i'm saying right i don't have to try it i don't have to fake it it is there it's involved Hallelujah. My soul automatically gets involved when I start saying anything about Israel. You understand this? Right? So, let me give you this hint. <laughs> If you want your soul to be involved in your relationship with God, you should learn to think about God. That's why the Bible teaches us to meditate in His word day and night. 
because when you start thinking about him you will start developing affection for him you will start developing love for him when you start thinking about it it will start producing desires and it will start producing uh, affection when you start uh, considering what god has done for you and how he has helped you right you will start developing gratitude you will start developing a deep sense of affection for god so you if you want your soul to involved to be involved in your relationship with god you have to you have to involve your mind your thoughts your imaginations into this relationship that's when your soul will get involved we will we are going to talk more about that in the coming messages thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon